The National Farmers Union started life in 1908 and now represents more than 46,000 farming and growing businesses across the United Kingdom. This campaigning organisation lobbies government and other bodies to get the best deals for British farmers to allow them to produce good, sustainable food for the home and export markets. As Jeremy Clarkson makes clear on his Amazon Prime show, farmers are uncertain about the future. Brexit has brought change as Britain now chooses what to subsidise. There are supply chain and labour shortages and the Russian invasion of Ukraine has driven up the cost of fertiliser and fuel. Egg and chicken producers struggle with avian flu. Minette Batters is the NFU's first female president. She's celebrating five years since she was elected to the post. She's now warning that the UK risks a disastrous food health scandal due to lax post-Brexit border controls. She joins me now. Welcome to GB News. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me on. Um, Minette, t tell us about the uh, issue that you're raising at the moment. You're concerned about the quality of the controls of food coming into the country following Brexit. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a game changer, really. And, and there are things um, in progress uh, to, to get checks in place, because ultimately we've got to replicate here for the United Kingdom everything that the EU did for us. And so obviously that was going to take time, um, but it's still not in place yet. Now, I'm reliably informed that it will be fit for purpose. But at the moment, ever since we left the EU, the EU has had exactly the same access to the UK market as it had before. There have been no more checks or balances or anything else. And of course, our exporters have to go through a, a fair amount of friction, the same with the relationship and the checks into Northern Ireland. So there's been big economic impact on the back of, of loss of access uh, through uh, Northern Ireland. And ultimately, there is a food safety risk here and a biosecurity risk. We have a disease called African swine fever that is prevalent in Europe. It's a notifiable disease and it, it affects pigs. So if it got here, it would be absolutely disastrous. So it's really important that we have these checks in place, whether that is fraudulent meat that shouldn't be coming in. But checks overall to make sure, you know, it's 10 years this year that we had the Horsegate scandal that brought this country to a standstill, I might add, and, and nothing shut things down quicker than a food scare. So we, we, we have to get it resolved and, and time is not on, on our side. It's most interesting because, of course, we're hearing all the time about how the European Union wants to protect um, its privileges and its uh, controls. And here we are talking about how, on the other hand, we might be afraid that British controls will not now be sufficient. Can we just um, step back uh, and look at the National Farmers Union? Uh, unions are in the uh, news a great deal at the moment because there's a lot of strikes going on, but you're not that sort of union. What, what, what does your union do? You're absolutely right. Uh, we are a trade association. We're a membership organisation that is led by farmers and backed up by technical expertise. We employ um, a, a significant staff team that are involved in all aspects of farming regulation, of policy on the environment, on water, on the commodity side, on, on production. Um, so we, we try and cover off everything that our members need. Um, so we're available to be helping them uh, at all times. And we also lobby on, on their behalf. Really, our, our whole aim, our whole ethos, our raison d'etre is to have a profitable, sustainable, uh, thriving uh, agricultural sector. And of course, I, I think the separation, you talked about us being a campaigning organisation. I've been very keen to campaign more and to talk about food more, because at the end of the day, farmers produce our food for every single one of us. Whatever our diet is, we need farmers to continue to produce our food, because otherwise, you know, we're in dire straits. And I think we've lost that, that link a bit. So, you know, for us, we committed to achieving net zero. We're a very exciting sector, one that can truly achieve net zero. Um, it's itself, you know, obviously we are a source, small source of emissions, but we are a sink. So climate smart farming, we can really, I believe, lead global change in how we produce our food 
and tackle climate change. One of the very big changes that has been produced by Brexit is obviously the change in the subsidy structure. Uh, the European Union used to organise the subsidies to farmers, now they're organised at a national level. And there was quite a change of policy here, was there not? Um, do, do the new policies make sense? Are they complete? Are they working? <laughs> it's been quite a journey, really, that leaving the common agricultural policy. It had previously been a sort of production linked uh, subsidy, really. It had changed. And without going into all details on the CAP, it was it was ending up far more of a, a social policy, if you like, of keeping farmers on the land, often in, in very, very challenging parts of the country which is still something we face into today about the social aspect of keeping farmers very much local schools, tourism, pubs, allied trades. It is the bedrock of the rural economy. So the change that really Michael Gove led in the very beginning was to go um, from a production subsidy to public monies for public goods, delivering for the environment, for water quality, um, food production, we've always been saying food is a public good. Without food, as I've just said, we're in, we're in trouble. So for us, it's about trying to make sure that food production and the environment are linked in this new policy world. Now, that's not been easy to achieve. And of course, you know, in my time, I've worked with four different prime ministers. Um, I've worked with many different secretaries of state and, and things have changed. So it's not where it needs to be. That is a certainty. Um, but it is better than it was. Um, uh, but as I say, the link between food and the environment is absolutely paramount. Um, Keir Starmer is uh, reportedly agreeing with something that Liz Truss said in 2014 when she talked about uh, the disgrace of importing so much cheese. And I think she talked about apples and pears and various other things as well. Are you concerned about unnecessary levels of, ex of importing, that we ought to be producing more of our own food? Oh, without any shadow of doubt, we should be producing more of what we're good at, and particularly prescient with the horticultural sector. Actually, this sector is contracting and contracting. We have a fantastic climate here, and we should be producing much more. So, um, that was the ambition of Liz Truss. I, I really hope Sir Keir Starmer is speaking at our conference on, on Tuesday. The Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, has committed himself back in August to a self-sufficiency target and a statutory reporting duty. That still hasn't happened, and it's absolutely essential that it does. Many people, I'm seeing a lot of pictures on social media, many people at the moment will be seeing empty supermarket shelves, particularly in the fresh produce side of things, shortages of tomatoes, of leafy salads, vegetables, a, a lot of empty shelves. We saw rationing of eggs in the run up to Christmas. And indeed, we called an emergency press conference to talk about what was needed. And it really does need everybody to step up. You know, we need government to make sure that parts of primary food production, where there is a lot of energy usage, things like growing tomatoes, peppers, have to be grown under cover. So we need to make sure that they are part of the energy trade intensive scheme that the government has in place. At the moment, no farming business is, and that's leading to contraction. And we also do need to make sure that we're producing more here. At the moment, we are importing more which is totally unsustainable. Um, Minette, just uh, a, a quick one at the end, if we may. You are a farmer yourself, uh, I believe. Will you be able to go on sharing those important duties with uh, running the National Farmers Union? I, I've always juggled um, both jobs, uh, running the farm here. My, my children would say that, you know, they, they should be at the top of the list. And indeed, of course, they are. Um, but they're growing up fast now. So, yes, it's I, I juggle a lot of balls, but um, I, it's incredibly important, my role right now. And I know that history will judge us all and, and me included. So food matters and hence farming matters, too. Congratulations to you on your first five years. That's uh, Minette Batters of the National Farmers Union.